This is quite interesting. It's an LED lamp module that is super simple. It's basically an aluminium core PCB with a sort of fiberglass layer in the front. And it just has a the main screen, a bridge rectifier with a tiny little 100 nanofarad capacitor across it, and then a chip and a resistor, and that's it. That's what drives these LEDs. And I thought it'd be quite interesting to see how that works. So uh, it came in anti-static packaging, which is nice, and it came from a seller called ESP Understroke E Zone, um, and it was two pounds fifty. That's all right. It's uh, not a bad price at all for an LED module. Um, it came through quite quickly, and uh, the chip is interesting. I'll, I'll actually show you this lit, and you'll see there is a little bit of flicker. Uh, and there's a reason for that. Now, the flicker will be visible on camera, but uh, it's not visible to my eye. It's, uh, and even when I, sh I wave my finger frenziedly in front of it, I don't get a huge amount of uh, ripple. It's quite intriguing. So uh, I'm just going to power it up. And I won't pick it up now because it is live at mains voltage. It's drawing 8.4 watts. But uh, having tried it already, I noticed that went down progressively or, uh, initially when it, as it warmed up. I think it's designed probably to be mounted in a sort of heat dissipative surface. The current it's drawing is about 34 milliamps. So, um, the arrangement is unusual. It's a very special chip. Uh, it's not one I've actually had one of these before. Uh, the actual data sheet, it's an SM2087, and the data sheet was quite hard to find online. And it seems to be a large string of series LEDs, but they're tapped in various positions onto this chip with a sense resistor. And from what I can see, there's very little. It's not like the data sheet where it shows a block diagram of how it works. I've been trying to work that out myself. And as far as I can see, uh, the sense resistor has is various voltage levels are detected that control basically little isolated electronic switches inside this chip. Now, this uh, board has 24 5050 LEDs in it, and these 5050 uh, packages each contain three chips. So the mains comes in, goes to the rectifier, it has that little uh, decoupling capacitor, which uh, is not shown in any of the data sheets. Uh, I'm not sure why they've got that. When I turn this on, I also hear a slight click when I turn it on, and I wonder if it's that that's making that noise. I'm not sure 100%. It's as if something's just uh, distorted slightly when it's turned on. That doesn't sound that great, does it? But um, from the positive, it uh, comes off the rectifier and goes to this LED, and then it loops out and it starts working its way in with all the LEDs in each chip in series until it gets up to the 11th LED, and then it comes to uh, switch uh, one in this chip. Then there's another seven LEDs after that, and then it goes to switch two, then another three goes to switch three, uh, and then another three LEDs goes to switch four. These are the last three LEDs here. And it appears that it rides the sine wave, uh, the full wave rectified sine wave. And initially, because if you, because the voltage uh, starts off at zero at the start of the sine wave, it will gradually increase until it reaches the forward voltage of these LED, the first set of LEDs. And this switch will be closed for that. And as soon as it detects current flowing, um, and it senses that, uh, the voltage rise in the resistor, as soon as it reaches the first threshold point of 0.55 volts, uh, it will then switch in, it will switch switch one off and switch two will go on, so more LEDs will be in series. And basically speaking, as the voltage rises in the sine wave, it just increases the number of LEDs in the series, which is quite interesting. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure what it does when it gets to the, you know, when it gets to the maximum voltage. I'm not I don't think there's any ability to dissipate the amount of energy uh, that would be dissipated by this resistor or I think the current would rise too high. So I get the feeling that maybe uh, there is a, a fifth position as such that once it, the current goes too high, it actually turns them off until the voltage and the, the part, that part of the sine wave starts going down. So I doodled. Uh, you, oh, incidentally, the resistor sets the current. Uh, in this case, it's a 20 ohm resistor and it's roughly 35 milliamps it's averaging out as. So um, my thoughts are that if this is the full wave rectified mains, so it's a, like a sine wave but uh, folded up because it's been rectified, 
and let's just say it's 240 volt uh, rectified so let's actually just uh, make it easier by saying that uh, 100 volts, that's 0 volts, 200 volts and 300 volts and this is speculation, I, I wouldn't mind knowing what's inside this chip the, uh, there are, let's see, what was that? There was, um, i trying to remember how many LEDs there were. Uh, 11 LEDs, it was the first circuit, so that's 33 chips. Then 21, 9, and 9. Okay. So, 33, 21, 9, and 9. Oop. So, initially, uh, that's going to be about the forward voltage... Let's say they start turning on round about just after two and a half volts. So uh, 33 times 2.5 means they're going to be turning on round about here. So that part of the sine wave, which isn't very big at all, would be dark. And the first section of LEDs in this uh, uh, panel would light at this point. And then as the voltage increased and the current uh, through them uh, also increased, as soon as the threshold voltage of that uh, resistor was reached, uh, the first sensing voltage, it would then switch in the next set of LEDs, which would be about, I'd say at that point, uh, the voltage on the first set would be 33 times, say, 3.2. So it's going to be just over 105 volts. It's going to ride up to there. Uh, then the next set of LEDs is going to switch in. Um, uh, I'm not sure how the current varies at this point. Uh, I guess maybe they'll... Yeah, it's kind of tricky. Because um, initially they'll start off by adding, adding another 52 volts to that. So that will ride up to that point in the sine wave. And then once they're at their full voltage, it would be... Um, about uh, 33 plus 21 times about 3.2. Yeah, round about, well, it goes up quite high, up to about there uh, before the next section comes in. And then it's just going to add about 27 volts. And let's see, the total combined voltage of all the LEDs writ at once, 33 plus 21 plus 9 plus 9 equals 72 chips times about 3.2 volts it's going to be about 230 volts by the time they're all on um, and I'm not sure what happens at that point uh, in this part of the sine wave I don't know if they turn on to that point um, and then they turn off for this bit and then on again till they come down uh, as the voltage goes down again or if it somehow just maybe regulates the current it does have thermal protection but I don't know if I don't think I think trying to dissipate the heat of that section would be quite immense I tried filming it with my uh, my Android camera set to slow-mo and it tried to compensate for the frequency and uh, it didn't actually show me what was happening but um, certainly during normal operation this will be this will actually be displaying a pattern if you had a slow motion camera, a proper one and you'd see the living LEDs getting brighter and then you'd see the next uh, group of seven come on and then the next nine and then the uh, should I say the next three and then the next three so it would repeatedly sort of almost it would ramp up like a bar graph continually and the fact it's sort of it's really simple it, it doesn't dissipate a lot of energy across the little sense resistor even though it is effectively acting as a sort of current limiter I guess because it never actually passes, it never actually sees that much voltage dissipated across it. Um, so, because really it just follows and ramps up and down the sine wave, the power factor of this is apparently 0.95. It's supposed to be a very good power factor in these um, uh, for such a simple circuit. And as I say, when it's lit, you know, it just looks as though it's solidly lit. It doesn't shimmer or flicker like some lights do. So um, it's an interesting circuit. If you want the data sheet, if you do a search for SM2087, one of the first things that comes up is Gostin Electronics, uh, with some other random name it's got. But it takes a long time to download this data sheet, even though it's a very, it's not very big. It's only about five sheets or so. Uh, for some reason, it just took an absolute age to download it to the point that I thought it wasn't downloading, but um, it did in the end. But yeah, it's an interesting uh, little uh, panel. It's quite an interesting chip. I'd like to know more about that. But uh, yeah, there's not a lot of information on it. But uh, isn't that always the case?